Hi friends, welcome back to Max Electronics. Today we have on the bench Ultrasonic Scalar by Dense Shine. So this um, device is used for uh, removing a plaque and um, calcium from teeth using the steep. So it's got a water input here. This is the obviously adjustable water pressure. I would say this is more of a valve. It's not electronic. It's just like a little tap. Power button. That's a foot switch, which is right here. Uh, and all this uh, connects to this head, which has got three pins and a little water pipe. And the water comes out of the tip right here. So there's a tiny little hole there and that vibrates at around 40 kilohertz removing the plug. So this one is actually, I'm not sure if it's uh, meant to be for human use, but this one is actually from a vet clinic. And the problem with that is, I'm not sure, I haven't opened up, but um, the uh, doctor said that the this problem with it and she got a replacement uh, solenoid valve so I don't know if the valve is the problem or what's in the problem inside but we'll have a look so that's the valve that she bought so I'm again not sure what the problem is and I have another one here um, which is an older version let me just get it it's bigger it's got big controls it's heavier so it's obviously got a linear power supply I can tell from the weight and the problem with that is that the little uh, connector is broken off, so we'll have to find the pinouts for it, and we'll see if this one will work. So let's open it up and have a look what's inside. I've removed all the screws, and I haven't taken this off, so we're going to be taking this off together. Oh. So, we've got, by the look of it, switch mode power supply. We've got that valve solenoid valve which is just loose for some reason so it shouldn't be loose but it is uh, it looks like the correct one but i don't know if there's a problem with it we'll have to test it out um what else do we have here uh, we've got three two wires there's a three contacts however on this thing and no ground this looks like uh I assume, yeah, that's just a little rope to make sure that you don't overstretch it. So that's the power supply for the uh, head itself. So also I've noticed that there is a corroded connection inside, so we'll clean that up. Water comes in, goes through this little mini tap and goes to this valve. And from the valve, it goes straight to the nozzle. And the power saying this is the controller that controls the actual, you know, volume. There's a little fan underneath here. Actually, everything looks in a good shape. So that's definitely a switch mode power supply. A foot pedal. It's got a lot of connectors. Looks like it's a universal one. Uh, you can also connect. That's the power. So we do need a power supply. It says 240, but obviously it's not 240. Uh, I wonder what the power is. 12 watts. I can probably have a look from inside capacitors and see um, what sort of power supply there is. I can see that that's meant to be in there. Yeah, that's that looks like that's it. So, uh, let me just uh, open this up and have a look at what power supply this should be. I reckon it's about maybe 12 or 24 volts. And uh, th so how we'll determine it, and I'll have a look where the input is and where it goes to. If it goes straight to a capacitor, that means we've got a DC voltage. If it goes through a bridge rectifier, that's an AC voltage. And then you have a look at the value of the capacitor and surrounding components, and you can determine then uh, what the power supply is supposed to be for that thing. The next thing we're going to do is to check this uh, solenoid valve, which is uh, very easy to do. Uh, it's just going to be blowing in one side and uh, see if it leaks. If it doesn't, apply the power to it probably separately and see if it opens up if it does then the, the solenoid valve is good obviously that tube is crinked up and that would be needs to be cut off and probably you know reseat reseated there here's the power supply out of the enclosure and it's safe to say that this power supply is 24 volts. It goes straight to the capacitor. The main input goes straight to the capacitor. And uh, that means it's DC voltage. And also the caps are rated at 50 volts. 
And the other little hint that we have is uh, the solenoid itself, which I have removed and we're gonna test in a second. It says on it DC 24 volts. So obviously the device is 24 volts. This new solenoid, however, I've noticed it says DC 30 volts. So that not, may not be suitable and also, if you compare, it doesn't really fit it. The first of all, the whole diameter is a lot smaller on the new one. And uh, the size of the tubes, the output tube size is the same, but the input tube is larger on the original than this. And um, that would have a lot more water flow through it because the output tube's diameter is a bit large as well. So what we'll do, we'll uh, probably put out on the, so those electromagnets are removable and we're left with just a solenoid. So we're going to be keeping original Electromagnet. First, let's test it if it works. So I've got a 24 volt uh, DC power supply and uh, we'll hook it up and we'll see if it clicks. All right, so here we go. Yep, the solenoid works. Excuse the heater in the background. Just turned on, it's been freezing cold here. So, uh, Let's um, get the solenoids apart. So I'll take the coils off. Let me turn the heater off. So let's take that um, electromagnet off. And um, I'll probably be using this nut. It's actually more looks like. It looks like someone's already been inside the solenoid because the nut was the wrong way around. It was this way up and it was threading into the plastic, which should be this way because uh, you can see it's got that little lip so we'll pull apart this um, existing solenoid and we'll have a look i'll zoom in for you so you can see better what i'm doing and let's have a look what's inside it's probably just needs cleaning i doubt it's faulty so we'll carefully remove the top And it's all gunked up. As you can see, the solenoid is good. It's just very, very filthy dirty. So we'll clean this all up and uh, that should be working just fine. Well, so let's pull apart the good solenoid. Obviously the coil we won't be using. So it looks, yes, it looks like we'll, it's just a direct swap. They look identical. Same size, same valve, same everything. So what I will be doing then, I will be cleaning this body. It's definitely clogged up with all sorts of stuff in there. That's a new body. And yeah, the diameter of the hole is definitely, uh, definitely larger in the older one. So that's why we will be using the, uh, the old body. So I will clean this all up and I'll return. I've submerged the whole assembly, the whole block and the lead in a CLR, which uh, got rid of all the um, calcium buildup. I've verified the flow, it's flowing well. There's a bit of a discoloration inside, but that's just aesthetics. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this new valve and I'm gonna put a little bit of oil around the rim. This will help the seal it better. Just a finger up. So let's assemble it. And I've got the new screws from the new um, coil. That'll look really nice. Make sure the screws are nice and tight. So uh, let's add, let's actually, I'm just gonna blow in it just to verify. Yep, it's sealed. So let's add the coil and let's uh, try powering it on. See how well it works. So we've got 24 volt DC. And I'm gonna energize it and blow through it. You can hear it clearly, air is coming out of it, which it didn't before. And of course, now it's closed. So the valve is fixed. Um, I will be blowing through this assembly just to make sure there's no clogs inside there. So I'll do this and then we'll start reinstalling the valve.
I fitted the pipes onto the solenoid valve and placed it where it's supposed to be. However, there's a bracket missing. Well, there's supposed to be something on top which is missing and uh, two screws wouldn't be long enough. You can see there's a bit of a distance in they right there and they are broken off both sides. So luckily I found the bracket that fits just well. It's actually from a computer or from a server to be honest. And the sizing of the holes are perfect match. So I found two screws that we're going to be using to mount this with. And I will assemble the whole thing together and then we'll uh, test it out. I won't put the lid on, we'll just test it out as is and see if it works. The device is now assembled, well almost fully, ready to plug in. So I've got 24 volts uh, DC supplied directly to the uh, power supply of the unit. Let's power it up and see what happens. Okay, so it looks like it's working. It's consuming 163 milliamps at the moment. The fan is, however, definitely needs to be replaced. The fan is really noisy. Let's try triggering it to see what happens. The valve is working just fine. And there's a, yeah, it seems to be working fine. I haven't got the tip on, so we'll scope it as well to make sure. Let me just turn this off. Uh, we'll scope this as well to make sure it's got the uh, frequency and I'll clean the uh, plug here as well. So let's, uh, let me just quickly replace that fan so it's not noisy like it is. And then we'll get the scope out and measure the output on that thing. I've got the scope ready. I've replaced the fan. So the fan is now nice and smooth. Um, I'm using the uh, portable scope at the moment. So the probe is not calibrated for the scope. So the actual square wave is uh, quite curved. But it doesn't matter. We don't want to see the wave. We know it's there. We just want to see the frequency and make sure the wave is there itself. So I'm uh, going to power the unit up. There, the fan is a lot quieter if you noticed. So let's now... Um, I'm trying to figure out what would be the best to measure it. Probably from here. Oh, you know what? We need to trigger it first, so I'll have to connect the pedal as well. <laughs> so let me get that on the floor. Okay, I am ready to trigger the output, so let's watch the scope and see what happens. And yeah, we've got 20 kilohertz signal, so let's just get it a bit smaller and let's get the timing so yes we got our signal at 24 volts 28 kilohertz, 32. Again, the, it's not really square because the probe is not really um, calibrated, but we see the result that the, it's working. Duty cycle 51.2%. So the machine is fixed. Brilliant. So I'm going to put this together and as a bonus, let's have a look at the second machine. Oh, yeah, by the way, I almost forgot. I have still have to clean the contacts here. So I'll clean them off, off the frame because I'm pretty sure you don't really want to see me cleaning the contacts. So I'll clean them off and then we'll go for... Uh, actually, let's plug the nozzle in and see what happens. Oh yeah. It's burning my skin. So, <laughs> uh, you didn't see that, but yeah, I've touched it and it, uh, it leaves the marks on my skin, so it definitely works. Let's get this unit off the table and put the second one on. And here is the second unit. So it's got a pedal again, which is disconnected. So we'll put that aside if I can get those cords untangled. Okay. 
Now this one is missing the plug. Someone obviously tried to fix it, but when they disconnected the regional uh, transducer, they ripped out the cords. So we will have to track down which cord goes where. Obviously there's three, and the other one was two. This one's got three, and that's the water pipe. Which is quite old, but should be enough if we get quite a bit longer. So, uh, okay, let's uh, let's open this up. This has got an interface, it's got endo, I'm not sure what that is. Power, water, which is just a single normal tap, and the power is just uh, a simple pot. Uh, so let's uh, take the cover off. So here comes the cover. And what do we have? Looks like there's a leak of the pressure regulating valve, which we'll have a look at. And just like expected, we've got this tube going straight into the end of it. We've got the three wires for the transducer. So we've got ground and the power. Simple trim port with just two wires. Uh, power button switches. What else? Looks like that's it. So let's, um, it's got a linear power supply, which is always good. So what I'm gonna do is I'll unscrew this um, valve that's actually yeah that's the valve itself it's 35 volts dc and we'll test it out we'll make sure that that doesn't leak because there is a lot of water around it and corrosion there's a little bit of corrosion down here as well if you can see that which is probably from dripping out here someone tried to fix it by the look of it unsuccessfully yeah it's all loose so we'll redo all this uh, we'll probably have to shorten it by uh, a little bit to get that tube reconnected to this part here that has actually been ripped off. So I'm gonna pause for a sec while I undo this and check the valve and check all those connections. Then we'll reassemble and reassemble it and uh, solder that on. I have uh, redone the circuit board, I've cleaned off all the corroded contacts, I've redone the whole back of it, resoldered, tapped everywhere, I've replaced also three caps uh, that were obviously leaking, and I mean physically leaking, I don't know if you can see it's actually leaking electrolyte, uh, that's only three that there were, so I've replaced them with the new ones. The board should be good. I've also redone this, I've removed and redone this contact for the switch pedal because that was so loose. You could wiggle the contacts on the back of the PCB and you can see they wiggled, they weren't even making connection. So that board is done. Uh, let's put it back into the enclosure, solder the plug in and plug it in, see what happens. So I have completed uh, this uh, project, I think. We haven't tested it yet. Where is the end? I've already attached the plug, plug to it. So plugs here, uh, let's measure the frequency of the output. So this device is actually 32 volts. The other one was 24. So wh where is the, there we go. So, all right. There we go. Oh. So that's at 33 kilohertz. And that's working fine. So if we connect the tip, we'll use the same tip. And let's see, um, let's get a screwdriver. You can hear the noise. So it's working fine. The device is done and it's working. All that's left to do is to add the warranty label. So no one tempers with it. Those labels are great. If you remove it, it leaves a little void sign. So you know that people's removed it before. There we go. So device is done. Thanks for watching. My name is Max. You've been watching Max Electronics. See you next time. Bye.